call our second speaker here, um, So Sneha. Um, over to you to present your findings. Yes, thank you so much. So yeah, let's quickly get started. Um, Machine learning models, I would say they benefit from large and diverse training data sets. Using such data sets, however, often requires trusting a centralized data aggregator deployed in, let's say, a cloud system. For sensitive applications like healthcare and finance, this is undesirable, right? As this could compromise patients' privacy or leak trade secrets. So you, using a trusted execution environment like trusted hardware enclaves, mutually dis distrusting parties can efficiently train a machine learning model without revealing the training data. I am Sneha from the developer relations team at R3. And in today's talk, I'm going to introduce you to Conclave, which is a framework which we've built, which leverages this trusted execution environment to fully secure training an AI model by multiple parties. Now, this shows a typical machine learning process. This starts with multiple parties, which are, as of now, over here, I'm showing it as hospitals. So multiple hospitals are collecting data. This data is fed to the model for training the model. The goal of training the model is to answer a question or probably to make a prediction as correctly as possible. The model is evaluated using the training data set. It makes predictions. And then these results are sent back to the clients. We can then tweak tune model parameters based off this evaluation. Ensuring privacy of input data sets requires protecting both the data and these model tuning parameters. Now, examples could include clinical researchers training a model on patient information from several geographically distributed hospitals. This helps in diagnosing a disease. But directly sharing data is unacceptable, right? The hospitals must protect their patients' privacy. Thus, to protect the shared data and the computations performed on them, this requires a privacy-preserving machine learning platform. Now, that's where the need for confidential computing or rather deploying models in a trusted execution environment comes into picture. Now, in the absence of trusted execution environment or trusted hardware enclaves, what do we have as of now? Primary approaches to pri privacy-preserving computation um, it, it might include, let's say, um, using secure multi-party computation like garbled circuits or homomorphic encryption. However, there has been some recent work and some reports are out on the internet which suggest large runtime overhead when you try to use any of these. And this actually limits the practical adoption for heavy compute intensive computation. And that's why we propose Conclave which is an alternative privacy-preserving multi-party system based on the trusted SGX processors. Now, trusted execution environment, such as Intel SGX, which we have as of now in the market, they enable execution of programs in secure enclaves. When I mean, when I say secure enclaves, it's nothing but a protected region of memory. Hardware protections isolate computations in enclave from all of the programs on the same host, including the operating system. Conclave uses, or rather this technology, which is the confidential computing technology, or rather uh, the trusted execution environment, or rather the enclaves. This uses a technology called as remote attestation, which is nothing but basically a digital signature over your enclave code that the remote party or basically the clients can verify at their end. Now, if you really have to look into uh, the implementation of Intel SGX, that I have summarized in this diagram. An application is usually split into two parts. One is the secure one and one is the unsecure one. The application, which is untrusted part, uh, which is the untrusted, 
it launches your enclave and this enclave is placed in this particular protected memory which is the basically nothing but the enclave when an enclave function is called only the code within the enclave can see its data external access are always denied and when this function returns enclave enclave data stays in this protected memory and that's how sgx intel sgx or rather this intel sgx this provides the confidentiality and integrity of your enclave code and data which you have deployed in this particular region let's quickly now jump into what exactly conclave is conclave is a toolkit that simplifies the development of application running inside this piece of memory which is the enclave um the conclave uses graal vm hence because of this it supports various high level languages including java kotlin or even javascript or rather python as well i would say conclave is basically an interface between the trusted and untrusted application and let's let's the application and the enclave interact with each other conclave itself is written in kotlin but you can write a conclave application in any of the jvm compatible languages again conclave supports development in all of the platforms in windows linux and mac when it comes to writing any typical conclave application it primarily has three components which you can see in the diagram you have ideally the client who wishes to deploy its code in the enclave then you have the host and then you have the enclave host is the entity which takes care of loading the enclave it is typically a typical application which uses a standard jvm like hotspot again the host application are considered to be completely untrusted now the client interacts with the enclave via the host conclave uses mail for sending messages from client to enclave and the other way around as well now this mail api makes it very easy to deliver encrypted messages such that only the expected receiver can read the message now that we know on a from a very high level what are the typical components of a typical conclave application let's now take a look at a typical flow when you want to deploy let's say your application in this enclave now this is a typical conclave flow for any simple conclave application number 1 the host loads the enclave and it starts the attestation service and it retrieves the attestation object this attestation object is that piece of information that helps the client identify the authenticity of the enclave we will talk about this more when we look into the code the client can verify these values from the remote attestation object at its end if the client is happy so look at the fourth step if the client is happy the client will use enclave's public key which the enclave has sent from the remote attestation object and then the client will use the enclave's public key to encrypt the request to be sent to the enclave it will wrap it up in an conclave mail object and send it to the host the host can do some processing at its end if required the sixth step the host will forward this mail object to enclave the mail body is completely encrypted using the enclave's public key and hence this cannot be read by the host point number 7 the enclave will take this request it will execute the code within it within this protected region and the data used here is completely protected by the enclave from the outside world the enclave point number 8 the enclave now will send reply back to the host point number 9 the host will forward this reply to respective client now that's how a typical conclave application works now let's take a look at a simple conclave application now what we will be doing over here is we will be deploying an ai model which detects breast cancer and we'll be deploying this model to an sgx enclave 
I am going to use Tribio. So Tribio is a machine learning library which is written in Java. It provides tools for classification, regression, clustering, model development, and much more. We will see how easy it is to deploy this model using Tribio and Conclave to an Intel SGX enclave. Now, if you look into the diagram, we have multiple hospitals for this application, which will send their data to the enclave for training the model. Inside the enclave, we will load a simple Tribio model. We will aggregate the data from all the clients and we will train the model using this data. Finally, we will test the model using testing data provided by the clients and we will send the evaluation results back to the clients. Now, let me, um, let me switch and show you a demo of this simple Conclave application. Let me share my intelligent, um, intelligent idea. Um, now, before we start off, I'll recommend all of you to simply download an SDK, which is the Conclave SDK. And including this in the sample, you can easily write the sample in, in let's say, um, in a, like quickly. So this sample is pushed on to our Conclave um, samples rep repo. And I will share this link to this sample as well in the chat channel after our session. Now, if you look over here, we have three modules. We have the host, we have the enclave, and then we have the client. Now let's, before, before even looking into the code and running this, let's quickly look at the overall flow of our application. Now the host will load the enclave first. Firstly, the host will load the enclave for the very first time. Enclave will load a classification model using the Tribio APIs. The clients, which are the hospitals in this case, they will send training data to the enclave. The model will be trained inside the enclave using the Tribio APIs. The host will request the remote attestation object from the enclave. The enclave will also add its own public key to this remote attestation object. Clients will connect to the host and the host will send this remote attestation object to the client. Clients can verify this remote attestation object. And if it feels that everything is good, if it feels that you can very well trust the enclave, um, if it feels that the enclave is running on, let's say, a latest security, uh, a latest CPU, which is fully patched with the latest security updates. So all of the, these details are present in this remote attestation object. So if it feels that everything is good, it will encrypt the model training data using the public key sent by the enclave and send it to the host. The host will just relay this information to the enclave. Enclave will decrypt the training data using its private key. It will run the logic inside the enclave. Now, now please note at this point of time, the training data set is only accessible only within the enclave. And so none of the clients can see each other's data, but still you can actually train an AI model using the data provided by all the clients. So it will run the logic inside the enclave. It will train the model using this training data set. Client can again submit an evaluation request. The enclave will evaluate the model using the client's public key. It will encrypt the message and it will send back the evaluation results to the client. Now, again, the client will decrypt the result using its private key and display the result on the screen. So again, these, all of these are completely internals about how this application works, but all of this is completely taken care by the Conclave platform. And you as a developer, you only have to focus on writing the business logic.
now let's take a look at the host code if you look at the host code there is nothing inside it so we are using the enclave web host which takes care of all the boilerplate code for you and hence there is no code in the host module you just have to add the dependency of enclave web host let's take a look at our enclave class to write enclave in conclave you have to extend your class with the enclave class this tells the conclave platform that this code should be run inside an enclave enclave basically takes your input and then um it deserializes it and saves the testing and training data set when the client <coughs> excuse me when the client sends evaluate um it will use the trivio library and it will load uh, this particular model it will train the model using the training data set and then it will evaluate our ai model using the testing data set now let's look at the client side on the client side again we are using the conclave web client which again handles lot of the boilerplate code for you so let's look at the code if you look into the code what we are doing is we are just taking um the training and testing data set from uh from different files so i have these files over here from which i'm ta taking um the data so th this is my data and what this data is exactly so there are total 11 columns in this data set the first 10 columns reflect different attributes which help in determine in detecting if the breast cancer is malignant or benign the last column is the class column and it signifies 2 for benign and 4 for malignant now the client will take all of this data it will encrypt the data and using the enclave's public key and send it to the enclave once the enclave has processed and sends the reply back to the client the this client will simply decrypt the result and print it on the screen so that's about it from the code perspective now let's run this application and see um how all of this works so let me share now my terminal yes so um so so this is my docker environment and what i'm going to do is i'm simply going to start off Uh, just give me a moment please so now this is starting my enclave this is starting my host the host is loading the enclave and this is how my enclave has started it has retrieved the remote attestation object and these are my clients i am going to start off with my first client and the first client i'm going to send breast cancer dot data file to this particular enclave and i'm going to say that please train the model using this particular file so let's do that so when i send this request as you can see the enclave we have the client is able to send the request to the enclave 
And now within the enclave, we have a training data set and testing data set. Now let's use one more client. And now let's use breast cancer one to again train the model. So let's say that this is hospital two and it wants to send, let's say some 10,000 records for training the model as well. So when I do this, yes, so this as well connects. And now if you see, I have doubled the training and testing data set. Now I'm going to use one more client and simply I'm going to say that now I want to evaluate the model. So I'll just be passing the evaluate string. When I do that, this, the, the, the enclave uses the training and testing data set and it evaluates, it trains and evaluates the model and sends back the evaluation result to all the clients. So um, as you can see over here, there were multiple clients which were able to talk to one simple, one single AI, uh, AI model. All of them, they were able to send their respective training data set to this particular model. And this particular model was, a, since it is running inside an isolated memory, all of these clients can be rest assured that the data is not visible to any, their data is not visible to any other client. It's not visible to, let's say, the host, which is who's actually deploying this model as well. So even if you are deploying your model onto the cloud, you can be rest assured that the model cannot be viewed by, let's say, the cloud provider as well. Again, when you're trying to send data from the clients to the model, all of this is encrypted using the enclave's public key. So even if, um, so, so you, you can be rest assured that your data cannot be um, hacked by anyone when it's transmitting from, let's say, your client till the enclave as well. So that's about it um, for today's session. Uh, thank you so much. I'm going to 